Pedigrees. Okay, so uh, pedigrees can be uh, downright nasty problems, okay? But the big thing with pedigrees is that we want to be able to make predictions about what is happening when two organisms have a particular offspring, okay? So this is page 24, and uh, the pedigree involves Huntington's disease, okay? Huntington's disease, guys, it's a nervous disorder, okay, wherein uh, it's caused by an autosomal dominant gene. So what does that mean? So if it's dominant, the big H means has Huntington's. And so this is a particularly challenging thing for a pedigree and for any, you know, family that has it. And the reason is because it only takes one big H to get it. All right. Um, I can remember I was dating a, a young lady in, in, in college. Her name is Marie. And uh, Marie, uh, her family, Huntington's, was pretty prevalent inside of her family. And so, um, you know, I think her dad had had it and her grandfather. And, I mean, it, it doesn't skip generations. And so what ends up happening is, you know, um, Huntington's is this nervous disorder that um, works almost similar to like a Parkinson's where it causes the nervous system to, to malfunction and shut down. Well, I remember, just to tell you a cool story, I'm dating this, this young lady and she was wonderful and uh, she went for genetic testing and screening and she did not carry the allele for Huntington's. So what does that mean? It means she was little h, little h. Meaning, if and when she ever went to have children, could she ever pass Huntington's on to her kids? Nope. She didn't carry the capital H. So, that was a pretty cool day. It was a pretty cool experience. All right. So, um, circles. Circles are females. Squares are, are males. And, again, capital H means the habit. So, this is a male with it. This is a female without it. And so, let's go through some of these problems. It says, what is, the pro what is probably the genotype of individual D, okay? So they want us to tell this person right here. Well, here's what I know for certain. You see this individual right here, right? This person right here, B, is gonna give 50% and 50% when that person does meiosis, right? 50% of the time that little age, 50% of the time that little age. And so no matter what, since this is directly their kid, right? You can see the lines here say girl, boy, girl, boy, all right? So those are their children. And so what ends up happening is no matter what, this person, individual D, would have gotten a little H no matter what, okay, from the mom. So then we gotta figure out what this other thing is right here. And what happens is this, I'm gonna look at person K. You see, little H, little H, and we know that person D has at least one little H, well, K had to get this capital H from somebody. Well, was it possible for K to get it from C? Because again, 50% of the time, 50% of the time. So therefore, this big H had to come from mom. So therefore, mom is big H, little h. And that's the kind of thinking that goes into solving a pedigree. She's a heterozygous carrier. In this case, does she have Huntington's? Yes. Why? Because it's dominant. Uh, let's see, what are the probable genotypes of H and I? All right, so H and I. So again, here with H, what ends up happening, okay, is we end up having some, uh, at least a little H. And why is that? Because that's the son of this lady right there. Now, they have a kid who is homozygous dominant. This is a rather unfortunate thing for the next generation, right? Because 100% of the time, person O, if that person goes to have a kid, 100% of the time, gonna give a big H or a big H, and it's dominant, right? So this person, every single time their kids are gonna have, or his kids are gonna have Huntington's. All right, so what ends up happening here is we know we have a big H. Why? Because one of those big H's had to come from the dad. But we also know that one of these big H's had to come from mom, right there, all right? Um, we don't know anything about N, okay? And so what would happen with H, okay, is we're absolutely certain this one is heterozygous, but on this person I, we know the person is H and something. We don't know. If we had a little more information about N, we could tell you definitively.
But we know that person I has at least one capital H. Actually, wait, uh, yeah, okay. So that's the case. All right, let's see. Uh, what is the probability that N will not have Huntington's disease? Well, it really just depends on what this organism right here is, okay? So what we could say is this. If person I is big H, little h, right? Then you'd have big H, little h times big H, little h, right? Big H, little h, big H, little h, big H, big H, big H, little h, big H, little h, and uh, little h, little h, okay? So what ends up happening here, okay, in this particular example is you'd have one, two, three with Huntington's and one without. All right, it says, what is the probability will not have Huntington's? Well, this one will not have it. So 25% of the time. However, if I is big H, big H, so if this was big H, little H, cost of big H, big H, we just talked about this, right? 50% of the time, 50% of the time. So I even have to do the Punnett square on this. No matter what, the kid's gonna get a big H. Big H means Huntington's. So what are the chances of not having Huntington's from a big H, big H? Zero percent, okay? Uh, let's see, what individuals can be determined, therefore, to have Huntington's disease? Well, the following individuals, we are sure, have Huntington's disease. And I'm actually gonna cheat so I can go fast. We know that letter A has Huntington's disease. We know that letter D has Huntington's. We know that G had to have Huntington's. Why is that? Because person L got a big H from somebody, and since this person's little h, little h, we know G must have gave the big H. Uh, let's see, H, we, are, we already determined that H. We've already determined that I has it. How about K right here? Yep, we know that L has it, and we know that O has it. So A, D, G, H, I, K, L, and O. The last question says, identify people whose genotypes cannot be determined without more information. Well, the following people we can't know without more information. Obviously, letter E, where we know, uh, where we know a little h, but we don't know the other. Could be a big h, could have been a little h. So letter E is an answer. Letter J is a, is a possibility or someone we don't know. Letter M is an unknown. Letter N is an unknown. And then we just talked about here or here, letter I. So the people we don't know are E, J, M, N, and I. Okay? And the last thing, all right? Person O, last question. Just to be sure I made my point. Could person O ever have a kid without Huntington's? And the answer? Nope, 100% of the time, going to get a big H, either that one or that one. And that is the pedigree on page 24. And now you should go ahead in your packets and complete the pedigree problems that are the remainder of the pages, that's 25, 26, and 27.